Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, I'll teach you how to do this animation in After Effects. This animation is created by Fafa Motion under the Tai Chi theory. I'll show you some behind the scenes techniques and do a short breakdown of this animation. The full 16 second animation working file is available to download in the Motion Circle store, link in the description below. Don't forget to check out Fafa Motion on Instagram for more of his amazing animations. Without further ado, let's get started. Now we have the whole file open, let's take a look from the start. As you can see here, this animation is broken up into different shots and each shot has a lot of different techniques you can learn from. We're not able to cover everything in this video. However, we're gonna show you a couple essential techniques in order to work on this animation. Let's go to the first shot and take a look how he animated the first shots. If I play the animation here, this is the first shot and you can see it's cut at one second while this triangle shape is coming up and it's cut right there. So if I go to my scene one breakdown and if I solo all these layers, you can see. So what he did is he animated a bunch of different circles in different shades of gray. And then by controlling the position property and the scale property, we're able to get an animation like this. It can be something random. However, this randomness after we add the fast box blur effect is gonna create a gradient animation like we see in the first shots. So after we have these circle animations, what we also did is we use a null to control some of the circle animation. You can see these shapes are parented by the layer number 26, which is the null. And then for the null, we only have this one rotation animation, just rotating all the circles in one direction. And after we apply the fast box blur effect onto all these layers, And this is the animation we get after we added the fast box blur on all the different shape layers. Essentially, we're blurring out the edges of the shape layer in order to get the smooth, very fluid gradient animation in the background. After we have the background, I'm gonna talk about the light that's happening in the first scene. Let's go to this scene one light layer. First, we need to create a shape layer. Let's go to the pen tool and then let's draw a shape layer that's taking place on the one half of the composition. And next thing we need to do, we need to add a CC light sweep effect. So let's go to effects and presets. Let's add in CC light sweep. We now need to change the settings. Let's change the center to the right edge of the shape layer. And then we can change the width to five, change the sweep intensity or edge intensity to 400 and then keep the thickness to four. Let's change the light reception to cutouts. It's gonna hide my fill color of the shape layer. I'm still seeing this light ray here, so I need to change the sweep intensity to zero in order to only show on the edge. So now if I change the direction of the light, if I make the edge intensity thicker, and the width thicker, you can see we have a light that going through the edge of the shape layer. And then if I change the direction, what I'm getting is actually an animation like this. So essentially I want to animate the direction and also the settings in order to have a light ray that's shooting up. So let's add some keyframes. First of all, let's change the width to maybe five at first, and then let's add a keyframe on the edge thickness and the edge intensity. That looks good. And then let's go forward a couple frames. Let's change the width maybe a bit thicker. And then I also need to keyframe the direction. So I'm gonna change the direction to this way so the light ray is shooting up. And if I play the animation, this is what we get. Another thing we could use for this light sweep is that if we have a shape layer like this, and then we can put in the light sweep effect onto this shape layer. Once I set this light reception onto cutout, it's gonna hide my fill color. And then we can change the settings like the width, the intensity and the edge intensity, the edge thickness to these numbers or whatever number you like. 
when we animate the direction, this is the effects we get. We only animated the direction of the light ray, and you can see it's tracing along the shape layer that we have while hiding all my fill color informations. So that's how we create an outline around the edges of the shape. If I turn on both layers, this is the whole animation we get with these two layers. What we can also do is to add in a deep glow effect on both. We can change the exposure to 0.5, and then let me copy this deep glow. Once we have that, this is essentially the effect we get with the deep glow and the light sweep around the edges of my shape layer. If I go to the second shot, this is essentially what's used in the second shot of the animation. There is this light ray that's tracing along the lines of these shape layers, adding some definition. This light sweep is very commonly used to add definition and highlights onto the edges of the animation, as you can see in this project here, there's a light ray that goes around the edges of all these shapes, adding some highlight and then some definition and giving more details to the animation. And that's all I want to talk about about the light sweep. So the third thing, let's go into the third composition. Let's talk about this path here. Essentially, the way we animated this animation is that, first of all, we're going to have this one side, which is only a path property, just this shape that's growing up that looks good that's our animation on one side and then we duplicated the shape layer and then add a mirror effect in the center of the composition so we got a mirror that we changed the color to white and now we have the same animation that's growing on both sides and in order to only show the white part instead of showing both part we also add a set matte effect to mask out the left hand side for the second duplication so that we only show the white portion on the right hand side in this layer and then we're only showing the black portion on the second layer so this is the animation we have and the right panel itself is a track mat for layer three and now after we have these two animation we just basically added a slight glow with a circle just going up so that this glow is appearing underneath this white shape layer which makes the white shape layer stand out almost like a drop shadow so that there's dimension to the animation and we can see this is the final animation we get and that's how we animate the path if we combine the first three things we talked about the backgrounds the light sweep and the path property animation that's going to make up my first thing here essentially you can see here we have the gradient animation the first background and then we have the path animation and then the light sweep animation going up and that's my first shot and the last thing we want to focus on is the rigging that we're going to talk about. In order to demonstrate this, let's create a new composition. First, let's create a shape layer like this. That looks good. And then we need to add some anchor points. We need to add one more anchor point in the center over here. And then we're going to add another anchor point over here. That looks good. And then we're going to use another extension. So basically it's an extension script from the site that's called create null from path extended. After we have this downloaded, we just go to After Effects and then we'll go to File, Script, Run Script File, click on Open, and this is going to be the script. So after we have the script open, we're going to click on this handle controls and then make sure you select the path property under the layer control. So go to path and then select points follow nulls. It's gonna generate a bunch of null objects. And then if I click on this main layer, you can see all these null objects is parented in a way inside this layer control, effects control panel. Basically what it does is that after we have the null generated, if I go to this first null, if I go to the position property and then move this null around, you can see I can change the shape by controlling this null. And then each null is actually controlling a point on my shape layer. So you can see all these orange color nulls are the points that's controlling my shape layer. And then all the green color nulls is actually controlling the handle if I go push this one up and then if I change this handle here you can see it's controlling one side of the handle to adjust the curve like this however in this case we don't use these green nulls much so basically what we need is to control the orange nulls I can go select all the green nulls maybe just click on one and then select label group and then we can just 
turn it off, hide everything. Now we have these five different nodes to control the points of my shape layer. So in this case, we can do the animation now. Let's go find the first null that's on the top of the layer. And then if I go to P for the position, so if I change this null, drag it down somewhere around here. And then at the same time, I also need to drag this null down as well. Probably need to drag all the three as well. Drag it down. And this is going to be my starting position. Hit P on the keyboard. Add a keyframe, starting position, go forward maybe 10 frames, and then we have everything in position. Let's change all the three nodes, put it up here, and then the last one, it's gonna shoot all the way to the top. And this curve here is gonna go all the way here to create a curve like this. And then if I go right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, let's change the speed graph. Drop it down here, drag it all the way. Like this so that's how we control the animation here and then all we need to do is to add a mirror effect and then we can duplicate this layer so change the layer center to be over here and then we can change this shape layer into a maybe a darker color like this and we also need to have a right panel to be a set mat for this new duplication. Let's call this one right panel. And then over here, we're gonna do a set mat. And then let's set the mat with the right panel. This way we can have, let's turn off the eye icon on the right panel. This way we can have the two sides coming in like this. Once we have the rigging set up, as you can see in the scene here, all we need to do is to animate these orange color null objects to control the shapes in the scene. And then we can morph between different shapes like this one here as we go through the timeline. At this point, basically what we did is to animate the position property of these null object to control the shape. And then we can get other kind of shapes and get a very smooth morphing between these shapes. We can get a shape like this, for example, and we can also do a shape like this, where the two shapes become half circle. And then the last scene is when we have a triangle shape that's going across the scene. So essentially all we did is to animate the position property of the null object to control the shape to get a very smooth morphing effect. This shot is already added in the light sweep and the morphing animation as well as the fast box blur gradient animation at the back. And that's the technique that's used in this shot here. If you want to dig deeper into this project, there's a couple more shots that's more complex. For example, this one here. It's also using the rig that we talked about in the previous lesson, but there's a bit more to this one because in terms of this one, there's also a couple things. If you go check the project files right now, it's rigged in a way where you can actually control the size by using the scale property of this null object. You can see I'm changing the scale property and then it's controlling four sides of the shape. And then if I change the scale of this property here, it's controlling the size of my second layer, second loop. And this null is actually control the third loop just by simply using the scale property. If I change the rotation, it's also controlling the rotation. And that's how we can get a really smooth animation, almost like a tunnel animation that we get. This thing can just go shoot out like this. Other than this shot, there's also a couple more shots over here at the end that you can take a look at once you get the project file from our project file store. It's a masterpiece by Fafa Motion. I really appreciate it that he can share us the file and then we can do a little brief breakdown. But if you want to check more details and get the whole file, please visit our store at motioncircles.com. We're going to do a couple more breakdowns from other designers with their amazing animation files in the upcoming YouTube videos. Make sure to subscribe and not missed any of the project breakdown. That's it with this video. Hope you liked it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for our next project. 
Let me know if this video is helpful in the comments down below and what other videos or tutorials you'd like to see on this channel. Don't forget to join our exclusive Discord community to hang out with fellow designers. Stay on top of industry trends and grow together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.